guys, it's Tina and I'm back. And I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. If you're also back, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. It's the I'm Back crew. But if you're new and maybe you like what you see, please consider subscribing because we have tons of fun here on this channel talking about makeup and all things beauty. And today that's exactly what we're going to do. So this is going to be a haul video because the Sephora sale is coming up. And I always do a recommendations video closer to the sale, but I wanted to share with you the products that I've picked up in the last couple of months or so that I've been trying and testing out so I can show you up close views of them, show you swatches, and also give you my final thoughts because I've had a chance to test them out over time, which is what I like to do with my haul videos. I don't just want to show you products and be like, ooh, look at this pretty thing. I want to actually talk about the product and tell you my honest opinion and whether or not I would recommend you pick it up so if that sounds interesting to you let's go ahead and jump right into it I think we should address the elephant in the room right now and that elephant is my hair oh my god so I just did a cut and color I was due for a professional cut for a while now okay I do my own trims I do a blunt cut whatever but I needed to get a professional haircut like for real for real so I went in and they were like oh do you want to also touch up the color I wasn't planning any of this right because I was doing the ombre I was cool with my ombre but then I was like you know what why not let's go ahead and do highlights so I did a full head of highlights to match the ombre so now it kind of blends into the ombre but you can still mm, mm, I guess it, it yeah it blends it blends okay I'm trying to critique it because I spent way too much on this after the cut the blow dry the color the treatment because we did like a deep conditioning treatment mask because you know it's blonde so it's dry and all that all the products that we use the whole nine yards I ended up spending over five hundred dollars I know it hurt my feelings so much, but I was like, you know what? It is what it is. It's fine. It's not something that I spend every couple of months, you know? This is my first time getting a haircut in a while, professionally done. So I'll eat it, but yeah, I do love how it turned out. Some of it's a little bit, you know, patchy looking, but it's fine. It just happens with highlights and recovering from like self-color into like this kind of situation but it, it's pretty and I do like the cut I did layers long layers so yeah I like it I like it you know it's fine it's fine oh and my dress Ooh, I've shown this dress before get out of my way chair so this dress I picked up at Marshall's y'all need to go to Marshall's I don't think y'all understand how cute oh it's dark it's dark can you even see it how cute clothes are at Marshall's but this dress was from Marshalls. The brand is... I'm gonna look and tell you in a minute. But it's just a flowy dress. It's so comfortable. It has pockets. Like, who doesn't love pockets, right? It is so cute. All right. Enough of that. The brand, Nicole Miller, New York. And I've tried to find this online, but I couldn't find it. Usually, if you go to Marshalls or TJ Maxx, it's kind of aftermarket clothing, you know, post-season. That's when they get the overflow or sometimes it's things that are specifically designed and manufactured for TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Either way, I love this dress. I love it so, so much. All right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump into the makeup because that's what we're here for. All right, let's talk about it. I'm going to start out with eyes because that's the most fun. So one of the palettes that I picked up recently, Patrick Ta. This is the Major Dimension three matte eyeshadow palette and I mentioned this in a shopping block video I was talking about how I feel like this palette was made specifically for me in mind because I have been requesting this from Patrick Ta for a while now since I tried out his other two palettes the first one I decluttered major dimension one 
eh. The shimmers in there, just not my jam. The mattes were nice, but they weren't enough for me to keep the full palette. So I decluttered that palette, but I kept number two because I did love the mattes and I liked the shimmers in that. So I was hoping that he would release an all matte palette. Now, not many brands release all matte palettes, all right? I'm waiting for Pat McGrath to do that. She's never going to do that. So I didn't really expect Patrick Ta to do it. And yet he did and that's why I feel like it's my palette like look at this baby now when you swatch it out there are two creams all right so there are two creams ten powder eyeshadows various undertones we have warmer shades we have more neutral tones nothing really pinky because I feel like major dimension one and two cover the berry tones enough so this is all on the neutral and warm side I wonder I wonder if he will release another all matte palette that has berry shades in it. Mmm, that would be fun. Anyways, enough dreaming from me. So this is an all matte palette. It has 10 powder eyeshadows and two creams that you can use as eyeshadow bases. And his creams interact really well with his powder eyeshadows. And they even interact well with other powder eyeshadows that you may already have in your collection. So I love this palette. I fell in love. And swatching it initially, it doesn't swatch the way it looks on his Instagram page. I was like, hold on now. I really had to build these up to get it to look as creamy as he did in his video. But let me tell you right now, these apply and blend beautifully. You get the pigmentation if you want it, but you can build it up. So if you're intimidated, like you're like, this is too much. No, I'm telling you right now. This is a great beginner palette because you can build these shades up. Even though they are pigmented, they can slowly be built up to your desired intensity. And I am in love. I've traveled with this palette. I've taken it on all my trips since I got it. I just love it. It's perfect. It's perfect for me. I feel like Patrick Ta sat down and said, we're going to make this for Tina. And yes, he did. And... I absolutely love it. Highly recommend this palette. It is very expensive. It's $70. So pricey, but the holiday sales are coming up. More than likely you can get a discount. I know Patrick Ta's website has like 15% off, so you can get it at a discounted rate, but absolutely in love with it. All right, the other eyeshadow palette I picked up recently is from Danessa Myricks. This is the Groundwork Defining Neutrals palette. <sighs> okay, here's the thing. This is $65, so it's not as pricey as I was expecting compared to her other Groundwork palettes that are $125. There's a new one coming out, by the way, that is $125, and I don't know how I feel about it. Now, this palette, first of all, beautiful packaging. Like, I love this deep bronze color. Stunning. She has the plate on the front that I had to glue in place because it fell off. And Khaki, I was watching her video and her plate also fell off. And I think a couple of you guys mentioned that your plate fell off too. So I used this in a get ready with me video and it fell off on camera. I was just like, listen, this is expensive. Why are you self-destructing in front of me? Anyways, this is kind of a different, almost innovative uh, eyeshadow palette creation because we have duos here of a pomade kind of cream product matched with a powder and there are also 10 shades in this palette and again cream powder duos now i did not enjoy using this palette and i've used it a couple of times since and my first hesitation was that i don't want a powder next to a pomade or a cream product in a palette but so far, the powders haven't really contaminated or mixed in with the pomades because the powders are not very dusty. They're not loose. They're also thin as well, so it's kind of just a whisper of color on the lids. It's not a true eyeshadow, not like the Patrick Ta shades that are really pigmented, like really intense. These are barely there. So the pomades are really where you're going to get the punch. And the pomades are in the larger pans. I thought it was going to be the reverse. So I thought the powders would be in the larger pans and then the pomade in the smaller, thinner pan. No, it's the other way around. So you get more of the pomade than you do the powder. Which I guess the aim is to use mostly the pomades because this is supposed to be like a multi-purpose product. You can use it on your eyes, your brows, your face, and your lips, right? 
And I mentioned this in that shopping block video that I did with the, the Patrick Ta palette that I don't think any formula is that universal, is that convertible, you know? <laughs> like, I don't know of any formula that can translate in all those different uses and do well in all of them. And I found that to be true for this palette as well. I enjoyed it in the brows, like using the pomade in the brows, it worked fine. Using it to contour like the bridge of my nose, it works fine as well. Even using it on the jawline, it was fine. But all the shades don't translate on the face. So obviously you're gonna use a lot of this on the eyes, which is where I had the most trouble. I didn't like applying these on the eyes. They're very subtle shades, which is fine. And as I said in my Get Ready With Me video, that may be perfect for you because you want a subtle eyeshadow. You want something that's just gonna give you a quick wash of color and you're done, right? For me, I want more punch for my products. So this wasn't necessarily my favorite thing to work with on the eyes. And someone made a comment on my video about how I should have done my research on how to apply these products and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, shut up. Like, shut up. I should be able to go into a palette and apply it the way I normally would. And I read the instructions, right? There were directions. It didn't say I had to apply it in any specific way, like use your finger, use this kind of brush. It didn't say that. It wasn't like, oh, pat this way, brush this way. And I watched the videos on Danessa Myrick's Instagram page and I applied it the same way she did, which is how you would apply any other cream or powder eyeshadow. So whoever left that comment, shut up, okay? No, <laughs> but shut up. Seriously, like how much grace do you want me to give a product before I give up? I am not new to makeup, so don't come at me like I'm a newbie, okay? I know to apply eyeshadow, like, don't play with me, all right? So, me using this and having difficulty, I'm letting you know, as a consumer, as a fellow makeup lover, you may have trouble too. If you're a beginner and you're just starting out, you may not like this palette. And I'm giving you a heads up, and that's what I aim to do. I didn't love this palette, I didn't enjoy the application, which is why I do makeup in the first place, right? To enjoy the process, and I didn't enjoy the process with this. I didn't return it because I'll use it on my brows, and I'll use it on my face, and I might get some use out of it on the eyes as well. And it wasn't too, too pricey. $65, yes, is expensive, but it kind of wasn't overly expensive. I'll keep it, you know what I mean? If it was $125, I would have returned it. Trust and believe. But for what it's worth, it's fine. All right, let's talk about a palette that was sent to me in PR. This is from Alter Ego. It's the Mirage palette. Now, Alter Ego does dupe palettes. They don't declare that they're doing dupe palettes, but that's their whole shtick, okay? They duplicate color stories from popular palettes, from Huda Beauty, Natasha Denona. I don't know if they've done Pat McGrath. They might have. Anastasia Beverly Hills for sure. But they do duplicate color stories. They replicate these color stories in their formulation, and they rearrange the shades so they don't look identical. So this palette is meant to duplicate the Empowered palette from Huda Beauty, which I do happen to have. So tell me that's not a dupe. Don't, don't play with me. So they have the same two cream eyeshadows, right, which Huda did. She has these two cream eyeshadows, similar to the Patrick Ta palette, actually, with a black and then like a red, like a dark burgundy shade, like a wine burgundy. And then all these mattes, they have the swirly shade here and the two goals, like, come on, right? But anyways, this palette is actually pretty nice from Alter Ego. The mattes are exquisite and they're mainly mattes in this palette, which is perfect for me, right? The mattes are really good. They apply and blend really well and their shimmers are a little bit more subdued than the Huda palette but they're also really beautiful. So if you were looking for a cheaper alternative to the Huda Empowered palette, cause that guy is what, $70? Yeah, go over to Alter Ego. This palette is probably my favorite one from them so far. I've tried like their earlier palettes. They were so-so, the pigmentation really wasn't there for me, but with this palette, they have richer shades. They are more buttery, they're more pigmented. They apply well and blend well. So this palette, I definitely recommend, and I do have a discount code for an additional 10% off. It is affiliated. I will link it in the video as well as down below. But 
Yeah, if you had your eye on the Huda palette, you can get this for 10% off and it's a good little palette. It's a great neutral palette. It's great for fall as well. Like the shades match that fall vibe. There's some warmer shades, some wine shades, burgundies, and those two golds which I can skip all together. But this is a nice palette and it made me pull out my Huda palette too because I really did like the Huda palette from last year. I can't wait to see her newest palette. I saw it kind of sneak peeked but then I can't find it again so I feel like somebody pulled it. It was too early to talk about it but I'm excited about the new Huda palette release. All right. Next in eyeshadows, I did go ahead and pick up a couple of shades of the Merit eyeshadows. These are the solo eyeshadows. So these are cream eyeshadows in a little pot form. They're pricey. They're 20 something dollars a pop. And I was hesitant because when I swatched these in store, I didn't like them because they felt... They felt dry because they dry down to a budge proof finish and I was like, oh hell no. These don't feel good at all, right? But I wanted to test it out anyway, so I did pick up the shade Vachetta, which is a neutral shade, you know, it would be good for an eyeshadow base, an all over shade, just one and done, you know, just to blank out the lids, which I like to do. And... In applying it, I was surprised by how it applied because I thought it would have been dry and it would have dragged on my lids. No, it actually feels like a silicone formula. It slips onto the lids, but it doesn't slide. It kind of just glides onto the lids. It feels silky. It blends out and it gives you enough time to work with it. You do have to work quickly with it though. That much I will say. It sets pretty quickly, so one eye at a time, work with it, hurry up, done, right? But this shade really sold me, so I went ahead and picked up four more of the shades, all right? I know, don't judge me. So I picked up Bron. This was the first one I picked up. I was like, all right, this is a dark brown. This is going to be great for deepening up, like, the outer V or using it as an all-over smoky shade. Because, again, one and done, right? And this shade is not as deep as it seems in the pan. It looks really rich in the pan. It doesn't apply that deeply. So I feel like this is a really approachable shade for a daytime smoky eye because it's dark brown. But it's a nice just subtle wash of color at the same time. Even though it's dark brown, you know? And then I picked up Mid-Century, which is kind of a mid-tone brown as well. But it's more on the warm side. So it has this caramelly hue to it. Again, it can be a one and done shade on my lids compared to... Vachetta, which is more neutral. You'll see the two next to each other. Vachetta is, well, yeah, Vachetta is more neutral leaning. And then Braun, no, this one is mid-century, is more orangey, like a warmer shade. Now, what you want to make sure you do with these is click the pan, right? Because these are cream. And they do have this mechanism in the lid that securely fastens it, all right? So your eyeshadows won't dry out. Make sure you secure it, because these dry out quick. So those shades were the first ones, and then I went back and got Nelson, which is the dark gray, which I love a neutral gray shade, so I was like, this is, this is my jam. Like, I love a good smoky gray. Ah, good fall shade. And then Viper, which is the green. Don't expect a lot from this. This is like a muted, sooty green. It's like an olive green, but it's desaturated, you know? It's not really a pigmented shade. It looks almost like a gray green, but I like these. I just have to say, be careful, blend one eye at a time, move quickly because they dry quickly, and they're budge-proof, smudge-proof, they don't crease, but so far I like them. Now, would I say get all these shades? No. Probably just one and done, you'll be fine. Maybe two shades, but you don't need to, like, pick up too many of these. They're okay, but they're not, like, oh my god, over the moon, so excellent, right? Some other eyeshadows that I picked up. All right, hear me out. Hear me out. I don't like to go in store because that's where I get caught up. But I went in store. There's this great Sephora. It's not that close to me. It's close enough, but it's not that close. So I was in the mood to go and peruse, right? I just wanted to walk around in Sephora. So I went to this specific Sephora because I know they have the higher-end brands like Gucci and Giorgio Armani, Valentino, Pat McGrath. They have those brands in store, right? 
So I went over to the Armani Beauty section, just, you know, for shits and giggles, and I happened upon their liquid eyeshadows. These are called their Eye Tint Longwear Luminous Liquid Eyeshadows, right? And this specific shade caught my eye. This is 56S, and I think it's called... I don't remember, but it's a burgundy wine shade, and this one has shimmer. And I swatched it, right? You know how you swatch and you walk around the store, you're like, blah, 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 blah. I swatched it, and it was so beautiful. I fell in love, and it's the perfect burgundy wine shade for the fall. And I used this in a Get Ready With Me video. I applied other eyeshadow on top, but just applying this, I was impressed because it has the pigmentation. It holds on to the pigmentation even though you blend it out and it blends out so easily. It's a liquid eyeshadow, right? It has this arrow tip applicator, but it blends out so easily and the pigmentation is there. It gives this beautiful like smoky burgundy look to the eyes and I fell in love, all right? So I picked up two more shades. I picked these up while in store because I was so in love with this initial shade. So I got 30M, which is a taupe. It's like a smoky taupe shade. You know I go for like a taupe, okay? This is, again, like a one and done color on the lid. It's just gonna even out the lids a little bit and it will give you this very light daytime smoky look, okay? Because it has that little taupe to it. So it won't look like it's your skin color, but it will look like, oh, she applied some eyeshadow. So I love this shade. And then I also picked up 36, which is the dark brown. Again, I can use this on the outer V to darken it up or use it all over the lid as like a smoky brown shade. So overall, I'm really happy with those cream and liquid eyeshadows, right? And then I went to Neiman Marcus because I'm in my fantasy luxury girl era, right? And I wanted to check out the Girl On quads. So Girl On kind of did a relaunch of their eyeshadows. They redid the packaging, the whole nine yards, right? And I saw this specific quad. This is their undressed brown quad. They released it, I think, for fall. I'm not sure, but it, it's a limited edition quad. And I wanted to see it, so I went in store and I swatched it. Oh my god, I fell in love with this little quad. So this has a similar layout to like a Chanel quad or a Tom Ford quad especially. And these shades applied and blended so well that I went and got a couple more of the quads. Now, they're pricey. Would I recommend you run out and get them? No. Unless you're in your bougie girl era and you wanted to treat yourself to some luxury eyeshadow, the one I would recommend is the Undressed Brown. I think this is so stunning. They have a holiday quad coming out with like an emerald green in it and a blue. Is it a blue? Or no, it's a wine shade. And I want that palette, but I'm a little bit apprehensive because one of you guys said it sucks. And I don't know how to feel because that burgundy shade is what's really calling to me. I'll see though, I'll see. But this palette, really great. Now, don't expect anything like metallic from these shades. Don't expect them to be blowing you out the water. These shades, and I find this with luxury eyeshadows, are gonna look very subtle right they give this kiss of color to the skin but they blend easily and that's what i loved about this it blended so easily it's like i applied it and one swipe and it was blended and i'm just like oh that what okay i'm i'm sold like sign me up i am on board i'm diving in head first and i went ahead and grabbed some more right so i grabbed royal jungle like you know this one spoke to me as well because it's similar to andres brown but it has some fun shades in here that can be everyday shades. So, oh, let me talk about Andres Brown really quick because I didn't even, you're seeing the swatches, but anyway. Andres Brown has warmer shades. It has, let's see, one matte shade, which is the deep brown, and then the rest of the shades are shimmery, but we have this dark brown. These shimmers, though, translate more of a satin, so they look like mattes on the eyelids with a little bit of glow to them they're not really shiny and then we have this orangey bronze like a copper shade not really a bronze like a copper shade and then this shimmery champagne 
really stunning and then they have these stupid little applicators that fall all over the place and i hate them so much and as i was saying i figured that royal jungle would be a good pairing for andres brown because they have different neutral shades but i can use them together because andres brown has like a deep brown but it's not as dark as this blackened brown they have in this palette and then these shimmers are really stunning they're more subdued we also have a shimmery dark brown but it's a little bit more nuanced than Andres Brown. It has some multi-dimension shimmer in it. It's not sparkly still, right? But it's more shimmery and beautiful. And then we have this bronze shade and more of a champagne for the highlight. Both of these palettes, I think you could enjoy if you just wanted a neutral color story. And again, these shadows kind of apply and blend themselves, which is what I really fell in love with. And then I picked up, of course, Mystic Peacock, which is the blue, green, copper, and then there's a black in here, which is why I'm kind of like, do I want the holiday palette? But I still want it. Oh my God, this blue is so pretty. Now in the swatches, these colors are very subdued, right? They look very muted, but I feel like they're wearable colors. If you wanted to do luxury color, this is how you would do it, right? You would make them a little bit more smoky, a little bit more subdued, a little less vibrant, and they did it well. And then I picked up Imperial Moon, which is more on the cool tone side. So we have that serious silver in here. That silver is intense. And then we have another smoky black, which irritated me a little bit because why is there a black in all of these palettes? I'm sick of it. Oh my God. So if there's a black in, you know what? I got to double check because if there's a black, in the holiday pack, I don't want it, all right? That wine shade though is calling to me. Now this one has a taupe, which is what I was drawn to, and then this more neutral shade. Now, would I say run out and do what I did and get all of these? No, I think Andres Brown and then the Royal Jungle palette would be suffice. Like, pick one of those for a little touch of luxury in your life, all right? Now, let me go into an eyeshadow palette that I don't recommend at all. Oh my God, so like I said, Bougie girl era, I'm in the zone, right? I picked up some Surat eyeshadows because I was watching Kaki. Kaki, I'm gonna blame her for this. She said, oh my God, Surat eyeshadows, they're so good. They're so spectacular. And I'm like, oh my God, I wanna try them. This was me, right? Oh my God, I'm gonna try. I'm mimicking myself because that's how I felt, right? So I went ahead and grabbed six shades that I figured would, you know, be, oh, watch a Surat to the wall, it pop out. Just a minute, so here's how they work. You buy these as singles, right? So they come in their own individual, let me grab it, little packaging, right? They, you can keep them as the little singles. Not really convenient, but they come with this little slide off cap, right? You get them and then you get an empty palette, which you have to buy separate, which expensive, but then you pop them into this palette, right? And then the labels, Oh god, I glued them on the glue is like sliding all over the place It's just been a mess the whole time and when this was delivered the UPS guy or FedEx or whoever delivered it to the wrong house And then you know how they take the picture to show you where they delivered it. I'm like that is not my apartment I promise you it's not my apartment. So I had to go hunting for this. Thankfully I saw like the picture was good enough where it showed like it was on a couch and it showed like the welcome mat at the front door So I was able to like find the apartment based on that. I know whatever I found it. Okay. I found my package thankfully and I was very disappointed <laughs> I wish I had not found it and just gotten a refund because these suck They suck so bad. Remember what I said about luxury eyeshadows kind of being subtle and subdued They're more muted shades these are hella muted, hella stupid, don't show up at all, and I don't get the hype. I would definitely say skip Surat altogether. These are trash. I wish I could return them because they are trash. I hate them so much. I hate them. Like, I regret everything about those Surat eyeshadows just 
No, I wish I never did it. All right, let's move on before I get worked up because I am very upset. Let's talk face makeup. So I did pick up Luxury again. I know, I know. This is the Chanel Sublimage Le Essence de Tint Ultimate Radiance Generating Serum Foundation. And I should have known better, okay? It says serum foundation, so I don't know what I was expecting. But I thought this was going to be a glowy foundation, which is fine, okay? Similar to their... Sublimage Le Tint, let me grab it, oh my god. This is the cream foundation, which I do love the finish of this on the skin. It's a little bit glowy, but it's beautiful and it has skincare ingredients. It's all the things, right? So I figured this would just be the liquid version. No, it's not. It's like a skin tint. It's very glowy. It doesn't give a beautiful finish on the skin or a beautiful coverage. It's just so-so. And I really regret everything about it because it's pricey. It, it comes with a brush. Which brush is it? I probably use the brush more than I've used the foundation because I don't like the foundation. But the little brush is cute. I use it for travel. It's a nice, convenient little travel brush. Fine, but could I buy the foundation without the brush so I could lower the price because this is like hundred and thirty five dollars If not more is that hundred and fifty it might be hundred and fifty the point is this foundation could have steer I got shade BD 91 It's a good shade match. I just I don't like the foundation at all at all At all. I really hate it. I hate it so much. So I'm gonna keep using it, you know probably try to mix it in with other foundations just to get the use out of it but I really don't like it at all and let me just dive into another foundation that I picked up okay bougie luxury and this was cheaper than the Chanel this is the Guerlain Paru Gold Skin Foundation this is matte I got shade 4W this one this is what got me with the girl on, right? That's why I went in to Neiman Marcus and grabbed the palettes because I was trying to see the shades of this foundation because I ordered this online from the girl on website. I think I got a discount. I don't remember how it went, but I ordered this online. But this shade is lighter than my skin tone. So I was like, all right, let me see if other shades would match me before I order it, right? So I went in store. 4W is my best match because 5N, 6N are too deep, too rich, can't make them work. They're just too much, right? And the 4W, I can mix it in with their other foundation. This is the Terracotta Le Tint. So I mix these two together and they work well together. It's what I'm wearing right now. And it's really beautiful on the skin. It really is beautiful. And, right? Did I powder? I think I barely powdered and it looks so good. Initially, it might look a little questionable, but within like 20 minutes, it warms up to the skin and it like, come on, my skin looks amazing. It really does. So I like this foundation. This is something that I may need to mix with the Chanel just to balance it out. We'll see. We'll see, but I'm going to mix the Chanel one and see how it goes, but the shades in this, trash, trash, absolute trash, because like I said, the next shade is 5N, and it's orange as hell, and it just looks bad, okay? 4W is too light, but I can make it work by mixing it in with a deeper foundation, but I do like this, and it says it's no transfer, high perfection, 24-hour care and wear infused with 24 karat gold and white peony. It has sunscreen, broad spectrum SPF 15, which is titanium dioxide and ethyl exyl salicylate. I like it. I do like it. It looks good. It looks good, which is ultimately what my aim is. If it looks good, I'm happy. Pricey foundations. I think I'm going to take a step back from my bougie girl era because I can't, I can't afford this lifestyle, okay? I don't like what's going on. The $500 haircut just threw me all off. It's, it's a whole thing. Anyway, let's keep going because we have concealers as well. So I picked up two different concealers. The first one being, well, this isn't the first one, but it's the first one that I grabbed. This is the Gucci, let's see, what is it called? The Concentre de Beauté Multi-Use Longwear Concealer with Buildable Coverage. The shade I picked up is 45W, which is medium deep. All right, here's the thing. This concealer is pricey for no damn reason, okay? 
but I do like Gucci makeup. I like the foundation, I like their primer, I like their lipstick. Have I tried their eyeshadows? I don't know. But I do like their complexion products, so I figured I might like their concealer. Is this glass? No, this is plastic, right? Yeah, plastic. It's not anything extremely luxurious to look at. It's a thin plastic tube with this floral print on the cap. It's Gucci though, so I don't know what to expect. We have some gold writing, whatever. It's cute enough. It feels weighty, it's fine. The applicator is a regular doe foot, you know, standard from any brand. So nothing luxurious about it, okay? But I did like it, how it applied. Now would I say run out and get it? No. Again, unless you're in your bougie girl era, there's no reason for you to get this, okay? It's okay. It's a nice concealer. It's not bad. I didn't find it to be repulsive. It's not a bad concealer. But is it worth, what, $47? No, because there's so many other concealers on the market that are cheaper, that to me, are better, you know? Or just as good. So, again, unless you're living that life, and what's wrong with living that life? I live that life because I like to treat myself. Prices the way they are these days, sometimes you're like, if I'm going to spend the money, I'm going to get something luxurious. I don't know. Treat yourself? I don't know. I don't... I'm trying to justify this purchase and I can't I'm trying to make up all kinds of foolishness that make no sense But the point is I got this and I like it. I don't love it, but I do like it compared to which one was it? Do, 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 do. Was it girl on? No, was it which one was it Dior? What concealer was it that I fell in love with? Hold on No, let me see. I can't find it now, but I think it was the Givenchy Concealer, I fell in love with that. So that one I liked enough to be like, yeah, this is good. And it had a decent amount of product in it. This one is just, how much product is in this one? Let's see, eight milliliters, not a lot of product. And for the price point, you can you can skip this one. Yeah, you can skip this. Um, all right, let's move on because we have another concealer that I picked up from House Lab. So this is the Triclone Skin Tech Hydrating and Depuffing Concealer with Fermented Arnica, okay? It matches up to their foundation and I was interested. I like House Labs and I've liked most of their products, so I want to try out their products anytime there's a new launch. So I picked up two shades. I picked up 34 medium golden and then 40 medium deep golden. So I'm going for the golden undertones. I picked up a lighter shade and I think my matching shade, 40 would be my matching shade. And I really like this. This blends out really nicely. And to me, this packaging is even more exquisite than the Gucci one because it matches up to their little foundation. It has the little H at the top. It's cute. It's plastic too, but it has a specific applicator. So it's an arrowhead or like a candle flame shape, but it's a little thicker and fluffier and it feels good. So when you apply it under your eyes or just on your skin, it's comfortable. Like it feels comfortable. It's a little tight going into the opening though. Like I don't want to break it, but I love this. I love this concealer. I think... It's a good shade match 40 and then the other shade like I can use that for brightening But it blends really well. It has decent coverage and I think it looks good on the skin, right? And that's my aim for something. Ooh under my eyes Looks really good right now. What did I use? What concealer did I use? Oh my god. Oh I used the Kosas concealer and my one size powder that's good. Anyway, that's not what I'm saying. Um, the concealer. This is really nice. It looks nice under the eyes. That's what I was getting at. And you need to set it down, obviously. It leaves a little bit of a glow behind. It's not matte, but it sets down pretty well, but you still have to set it because otherwise it will crease. But really like that concealer. All right, so I think we're done with complexion for what it's worth. Oh, I did also pick up the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dior... What is this called? Capture Total Cell Energy Super Potent Serum Foundation. It's this little guy and I picked up shade 5N, which is a little bit rich. 
it's a little bit deep but it actually blends out on my skin I have a tan now cuz I've been to the Bahamas and Jamaica so I got a little bit of a tan I was also in California but um this shade works you know I think 4n was just too light so I went usually I'm 4.5 n so I figured I could go for 5.5 if I need to lighten it up I will so I can probably even mix this in with the girl on or mix it in too with the Chanel just to offset it but so far I like this foundation it was on sale at Nordstrom and someone asked me about it I tend to like Dior foundation so I didn't expect not to like it and I did like it the finish is beautiful it looks good on the skin I like it it has sunscreen and it's age defined so I'm all about it um I don't know what else to say I like it you know if you were interested in trying it out, I don't think it's a bad find. It's actually pretty nice. Again, Dior foundations I tend to love, so I didn't expect anything else. All right. The other foundation I picked up is from Fenty Beauty. So this is the Ease Drop Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. So this is the stick version of their tinted foundation. Well, it was a skin tint. So, you know, tinted product, not meant to be like a full-on foundation. But to me, it actually has medium coverage, similar to a foundation. So I absolutely love it. I've traveled with it day in and day out. Love it, love it, love it. So I wanted to try out the stick. Now, I'm not a fan of stick foundations, but I figured since I like the skin tint, maybe I'll like this too. If I don't love it, I can return it. So I picked up shade 16 and I really do like this. This applies so well. It's so smooth. It does feel like a stick foundation, but it sets down almost like a liquid foundation, if that makes any sense. It looks good, blends out really well, gives me medium coverage, it feels lightweight, and then it sets down. And I love that. I do still set everything with powder, but it looks good on the skin. It's a great shade match, and it's so easy. It's so effortless. I think this would be great for someone that's just starting out in makeup, just starting out in complexion products especially because it feels so lightweight it's so easy to blend it's so easy to manipulate so if you're just getting used to applying it and you may miss a spot or something i feel like the shade range is sufficient to cover a good range and then it blends so easily that it's kind of foolproof so i really do like that a lot i think that against the girl on foundation those are my two favorites then again, I like the Dior too. The only one I really didn't like is the Chanel one. Yeah, so just leave it at that. All right, moving on. We have powders now. Okay, so I picked up quite a few powders. I picked up the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I picked up two shades. I picked up Translucent Medium and Translucent Dark, or is it deep? And I wanted to try this out because it says pore eclipse and it's mattifying and I'm interested, right? The packaging, milk makeup, you know, I love this black packaging. I think it's sleek, it's sexy, but it's messy because, you know, it's loose powder. And I think the only brand that has ever come up with, like, good packaging for loose powder is Oma. And I'll show you that powder in a second. But translucent medium is where it's at for me the dark shade is too dark so if you have richer skin tone then that would be the one to go for but the medium works for me it's a little bit light but once you blend it out all over your skin it kind of gives this beautiful light airbrushed look and i like it i do like the loose powder i think it's a thin powder it mattifies it does blur your pores it looks good so i like it now would i say run out and get it I don't know. I still feel like one size is my go-to powder, but one size can be a little bit heavy. So maybe I would recommend the Milk Makeup one because it still looks very light on the skin if you're looking for a loose powder that's gonna give you a beautiful like airbrush finish but without being heavy because one size can be heavy. One size under the eyes, hands down, but the Milk Makeup was nice. All right, here's the Uma powder. So this is the Trippin' Smooth powder. I picked up the shade Honey. But this mechanism and how it's dispensed, I love it. So the powder is in like a donut shape, right? So it's in this little plastic donut, right? With a well in the middle. So the well goes all the way to the bottom. And you twist this little plastic part. You twist it 
and it releases powder but it releases it at the bottom right and this well is so deep that it keeps the powder contained the only thing is you need a brush that's gonna get in there and you can always dump it out into the cap and use it from there I don't want to do that though so I'm just gonna get a brush that's smaller tap it off and then you know apply it to the skin I got the shade honey which is a little bit more on the warm side but this is a beautiful powder now this powder yes yes absolutely I love how it dispenses I love how it applies it's a very light powder I feel like it's more of a finishing powder than a setting powder though that's what I feel like I think you can use it all over just buff it all over the skin to give a nice airbrushed finish but don't set your makeup with it it's a does it say it's a setting powder though I don't know that the claim is for setting but it does set the makeup right but I feel like it's such a perfect finely milled micro fine powder that just gives that smooth effect to the skin I love it so I would recommend this one over the milk makeup but I do like the milk makeup as well Uma is available at Ulta only so you know navigate that how you will but I do like those two loose powders that I picked up now moving on to a powder that I absolutely hate this is from Huda Beauty it's the easy bake and snatch pressed brightening and setting powder <sighs> I heard really great things about this powder until I went over to the Sephora app right and I was reading the reviews and I'm like hold on why is it that all the reviews that are positive are from people that received it as a gift and they declare that right they're like oh this was sent to me by Huda Beauty to try out this was sent to me for review this was gifted so they have that disclaimer and then they're like oh this is such a great powder I love it I love it I love it and then all the negative reviews are people that actually bought it so I'm like something not right it seems fishy right so reading the reviews that are negative everybody's saying what I experienced this looks dry on the skin it emphasizes pores and I've used it multiple times now like I said I like to give a full review so I did a get ready with me it was the first time I was using the powder I used it under the eyes because I picked up two shades right so I picked up blondie which again this is a brightening powder I used blondie and it has a little sponge applicator it comes with it it's a bacon and setting powder so with bacon I don't know if you all know this with bacon you're supposed to get a decent amount of product and then press it onto the skin because it's supposed to bake right so you're supposed to press it it's gonna set and bake your skin right now this powder looks like garbage under the eyes absolute garbage does it brighten absolutely but does it emphasize every sin that i've ever had in my life yes and i oh, i'm trying to avoid that that is not what i'm trying to showcase to the world okay i have enlarged pores around my nose like right here so i try to smooth that out and the powders that I enjoy, my favorite powders, smooth that out. It's kind of airbrushed. I don't see my pores. They don't get emphasized by my powders. My AC just kicked on, so you're going to hear a little humming in the background. Sorry about it, but it's hot, and I'm just going to keep filming because I got to go, child. So, under my eyes, I like something that's smoothing. And I thought this was going to be a smoothing powder. No! It told every lie that I've ever told in my life every person that I've screwed over or said a mean thing to it's like payback bitch it's oh my god made me look so awful I hate it so much it's so bad it looks awful on the skin I absolutely hate it and then somebody was like hey Tina so you know that powder has micro shimmer to it right and I'm like does it really cuz blondie is more like a light yellow powder like a banana powder and then I'm like where's I don't see the shimmer I guess when you buff it you keep buffing it there's a little bit of a shine which is interesting let me see the ingredients do we have the ingredients on here 
Mica. Oh, could it be the mica? Mica is not always going to be shiny, okay? But if it has mica in it, maybe that's where the sheen is coming from. Which a sheen is not a bad thing. But why would I want to bake with a shiny powder? I don't see an extreme shine to this powder, guys, at all. The other shade I picked up is Cinnamon Bun, which is better. It's better, right? But it's a hard press powder. And people are like, oh, you should use a large powder brush for this, you know, and buff it over the skin. And I'm like, all right, yes, I did that as well. And it was better. It looked better when I did that. However, this is a baking and setting powder just in a press form which she has the loose form already but this is a bacon and setting powder bacon like i said is meant to be a heavier application that you then dust away so it's meant just based on the name and what it's intended for and based on how huda is it's meant to be used in a heavier way and dusted away right so the sponge that's included i'm supposed to be able to use that without looking like the Crypt Keeper. And that's whew, what the result was. I looked like I belonged in a mummy movie so I could haunt y'all from 1600 AD because girl, me look terrible, me don't like it. And yes, if you use it with a large powder brush and you know, dust it over your face, it looks fine. But why would I want a powder that just looks fine? You know, it doesn't look Mm -mm, I shouldn't even put it on my face a while ago. Look there. Oh, no, no. Mm -mm. It don't nice. I'm returning it. This is the first return in my bag. It is going back because I really don't like it at all. All right, let me let me move on to another product that I hate. <laughs> no, it, I hate it, but I don't hate it that well. I hate it a little bit. So this is the Rare Beauty Blush and Glow Four Piece Mini Set for Holiday. Twenty five dollars, you get four minis cute cute i was like okay cute 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 okay you know here's the thing it's not a matter of the product is bad because i think the liquid blush and liquid highlighter formula from rare beauty is actually pretty nice right the shades are the problem here so we have virtue and wisdom as the blushes and transcend and magnetize as the highlighters this is for light skin maybe light medium this is not gonna work on medium tan don't do it. If you're my complexion, don't even. It's gonna blend into your skin and leave behind this wet look that you may or may not be going for. Other than that, you're not gonna get color. I'm sure from a blush you want color. There's no color here. And someone had the audacity to lie to me and tell me that um, Virtue would be my perfect shade. You're lying. You're lying. It doesn't show up. What do you mean it's my perfect shade? You stop it. So this is going back as well. Again, light complexion dry skin you would probably love this i didn't hate it that much the colors just didn't suffice for me so what i actually did was i bought a full size of transcend which is the highlighter that yes i will get the highlighter did i actually where is it see it's here i did pick it up all right i should have waited until the sale but i wanted it so this one is a rose gold right it's in the i don't know that i needed this big old thing Cause it's a liquid highlighter that is reminiscent of like the charlotte tilbury highlight wand or even the which one is that from oh my god it's the glow lust from auric oh my god that took me a while to figure it out but when i used this in the get ready with me i thought that color was beautiful and it was very subtle it's not glittery or anything it's just a beautiful shine on the cheek and if you've known me for a while then you know i don't like highlighters i don't like highlighters i do like a subtle glow but it shouldn't be shimmery it shouldn't be sparkly it shouldn't be blinding so this is a perfect for me and i'm happy that i picked this up so that's one of the last things i actually picked up let's talk about skincare because i did pick up a few skincare products and got some sent to me so we have this glow recipe pomegranate peptide ferment pe <sighs> talking too long pomegranate peptide firming serum this is meant to firm the skin let's see 
Firm and lift the appearance of skin while deeply hydrating with this clinically effective serum. This treatment targets all skin stages and ages. I like that stages and ages to visibly help improve the look of fine lines and wrinkles. Polypeptides help to firm and maintain skin elasticity and work in synergy with antioxidant rich pomegranate seed oil for visibly smoother lifted skin. This cushiony milky texture melts into skin instantly to deeply nourish and drench with hydration without greasiness or heaviness that's true that is true so yes <laughs> it's a milky texture it's not like a lightweight water serum it's like a liquid lotion almost and it does absorb in it melts in and absorbs quickly right no greasiness no heaviness feels very lightweight and it lays really well under makeup I like this so far I'm gonna continue using it you know what I really love from them is the strawberry line so they have this strawberry serum I have been using that for the last few nights just oh my god that's my nighttime skincare routine that's the active I've been using so I wash my face I apply that and then I apply my sleeping mask or like you know my sleeping moisturizer and I wake up with beautiful skin Oh my god love it loving it all right the other thing let's go through these quickly let's see how fast we can move through so i picked up this targeting treatment from fenty beauty it's the blemish defeater bha spot targeting gel i like it so what it does it, oh my god i'm making a racket so you apply it's a gel right but you apply it over a blemish or a spot and it creates a little barrier like a little layer so it's like a thin second skin over that um, little spot and then you can apply makeup over it apply it gently though not this but apply the makeup gently so you don't disrupt it but once it dries down it creates a little film and it protects your little blemish and it has BHA so it has salicylic acid I think is the active ingredient and it works I like it I do like it a lot so I'm happy happy I picked this up I even picked up an extra one for my nephew because I feel like that will be ideal for him I also picked up the um, hourglass palette for holidays so this is the ambient lighting edit unlock this is palette number three but it's in the leopard palette because I customized it I like this palette a lot I don't think it's good for deep rich skin again hourglass is playing in our faces and I don't like that I do not like this so this is the deepest option this year and last year it was the tiger palette so I'll show you the two yeah the shades are different okay except for the bronzer the bronzer in this palette, was this a bronzer or was it a powder? So it actually says it was a finishing powder. So this would have been meant for deeper skin. And you can use that as someone that has deeper skin as a finishing powder. It looks very similar to the bronzer in this one, right? So are they tricking us? The bronzer in this one is just a little bit warmer, maybe a little bit more on the glowy side. So I don't know how to feel about that but I do like this palette I love the new blushes because five of the shades in this palette are new including the blushes I think the only thing that's a repeat shade is the setting powder over here which I don't even use as a setting powder but these blushes these three blushes are great the bronzer works on my skin tone but I don't think it would work on anybody deeper than me and then the highlight is stunning so I am happy with this palette I really like it now do they need to do better with their skin tone ranges absolutely because trash all right where did the bag go found it all right I didn't mention this but it makes sense to mention it now since we just did the hourglass palette this is the brush for holiday it's a travel powder brush and I don't think you need this <laughs> I could have done without this it's pretty right beautiful handle beautiful bristles it's soft but i don't really use powder brushes like this i honestly don't this is great for finishing powders so if you have a finishing powder and a finishing powder is different from a setting powder a setting powder is to set your makeup down right? a finishing powder is to finish and buff your skin so everything kind of merges together so your powder under your eye your blush your bronzer everything blends together seamlessly and you kind of just work the product all over right so that's what this brush would do and I like 
having it because it has the little snake print. It's cute. Is it something that you need for $50? Absolutely the freak not. Do I like having it? Yeah, so I'll keep it, but you don't need this. Absolutely don't need it. All right, let's go back to the bag because I have a couple more products. Oh, the Colfi concealer. I didn't even talk about this. Okay, I've used this twice now. And each time I kind of got sabotaged. No, the first time I really didn't test it out because I was testing out something else. But the powder from Huda Beauty, I used this and then I set it with the powder. Awful, looked awful. So this concealer hasn't really gotten a chance to shine yet. It's the main match concealer. The shade I picked up is Falula Fizz. It matches my skin tone perfectly. It's a medium coverage concealer. It's glowy for sure. It's... A nice texture it's not too thick but it's not too thin and again decent coverage I just the jury's still out because I haven't gotten to try it that much I don't know that I love it though you know like I didn't fall in love instantly so I don't know I really don't know how to feel about this one it's a decent little product Am I in love? Not really. And then I also tried out their shimmer eyeshadow. So where is it? Oh my god. So I picked up the shade Bronze Brocade. And it's a cute little shimmer eyeshadow. It's a pot eyeshadow. It's a bronzy tone. It's cute. It's like a whipped light airy texture. It's not really like a heavy cream. It has sparkle to it. I don't know that I'm in love with this either. So, Colfi, the jury is out on you. I saw these in store and I tried them out and so far I haven't fallen in love with their products. And I feel bad because I really wanted to test them out because it's from a woman of color, it's a woman owned brand and she's South Asian, which I have South Asian heritage. So I was like, oh, let me support, you know, my peoples. And so far I'm not impressed, I'm not in love, so. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. I also picked up this Simi Haze Skin Suede Melt-In Bronze Balm. The shade I picked up is, uh, let's see, does it say Maple 05? There are six shades. The deepest shade is not much deeper than this, and this barely shows up on me. I will keep this because I like the color for a nose contour. It's a very subtle shade. It looks rich in the pan, but you see very subtle shade but that's ideal to contour your nose because you don't want it to be too intense right but if you're looking for a rich shade from them you're not gonna get it at all so i don't know how to feel it says it's a melting balm it does feel like suede does it say yes yeah, skin suede it does feel very suedey because it's not a heavy cream it's not too emollient it's almost like a drier cream, which I like because then it blends well. It blends easily, by the way. Very effortless blend. And it merges with your skin really nicely, which is what I like about the formula. So I will keep using it. I just don't think the shades are that well done because they can go deeper. I think that's it because this video is getting extremely long. And I think those are all, yeah, the makeup products. I do have skincare products, but I feel like I should just save those for get ready with me videos because it's too much. It's too much to go through and I would feel bad if I mentioned some but not the others. So there you have it. Those are the products that I recently picked up. A lot of face products, a lot of eyeshadows, powders, you know, the works. I think we had a good mix here, right? didn't pick up any blush or highlight well I did that stupid little set from rare beauty but there you have it those are quite a few of the products that I picked up recently and that got sent to me and for the most part I'm happy like I'm having a good time but there have been some duds and some disappointing products and I wanted to talk about them and send you on your way to shop until your heart's content during the sales that are coming up for Black Friday, for friends and family, for the holidays, and also like the Sephora beauty event. And like I mentioned, I've done get ready with me videos so you can see these products in action, which is what I aim to do. But I wanted to like give you more feedback in this haul 
If there are any other products that I haven't mentioned, just let me know if you want me to talk about them and we can do another video. But I think I covered, for the most part, all the products that are you know, worth mentioning. All right, I'm gonna leave a full list of all the products mentioned in this video down below in the description box, along with links on where you can pick them up. If there is an, I said that really fast and I feel like I jumbled. Okay, let's enunciate, okay? I will leave links down below in the description box where you can pick these products up. If there's an asterisk next to any of those links, that indicates that it is an affiliate link, which means I will get a small sales commission if you make a purchase through those links. It's a great way to show your support for the channel because it doesn't change the sale price, but it gives me a kickback so I can put right back into the content. So I really appreciate you using my links. Thank you so, so much. I also have super thanks and channel memberships, which work like a tip jar. So if you wanted to give back to the channel that way i also truly appreciate it and i will leave links to my instagram and twitter where you can follow me along and until my next video which will be very soon i'll talk to you bye guys